Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am here with my top 15 faith-based Christmas DIYs. I sure hope you enjoy them. Let's get crafting. Please be sure to keep watching to the end of the video for a little Christmas surprise. For today's first DIY, we're going to be making a sign using this $3 nativity set from Dollar General, some paint and some little hay from Dollar Tree. So like I said, these are back again this year, these Dollar General nativity sets. They are like a pressed wood and this one side does look like actual wood grain. It's okay if you like the light color, but I'm gonna go ahead and give all my pieces a coat of antique wax just to give them a darker brown stained look. Then taking two of these 10 inch square signs from Dollar Tree, I'm removing the jute string and I'm going to connect these together to make one larger rectangular sign. So I am going to keep the backs the back and using two of these giant craft sticks from Walmart, I'm going to put one long ways and then cut this other one into smaller pieces to glue across the back. We'll just glue these on with some hot glue and then flip our sign back over to the front. Using some of this spackle from Dollar Tree, I'm just filling in that crack between the two signs to give it more of a cohesive look. And then I am also going to fill in the holes at the top. However, I didn't really need to do that because I'm going to put a frame around the sign. Then just take a sanding block and smooth out wherever you put that spackle so that it is nice and smooth. Then taking some Waverly chalk paint in white, I'm gonna give a nice couple of coats on the front of my sign just to cover over any of the designs to keep them from showing through. Now you might wonder why I didn't just leave those and paint on the back, but it's because I want my sign to have a nice finished look. Like I said, these signs were 10 inches tall, so I am making markings every two and a half inches, and then I'm just drawing the line lightly with a pencil to give my sign more of a shiplap plank type of look. Once I have my three pencil lines, I'll just take my finger and kind of smudge those out to blur them and just give it more of a farmhouse look rather than a stark line. Then I'm using actual Jenga blocks. You can use tumbling tower blocks as well. And just figuring out how many I need on each of the four sides. Then I will use some of my Gorilla Wood Glue to glue those four lines of Jenga blocks together. Once they're dry, I'm choosing to paint them black using my Waverly chalk paint in ink. To make my sign look a little more rustic, I'm taking a chip brush and my truffle chalk paint and just dry brushing some streaks across. The nice thing about this is if you end up putting down too much paint, you can sand it, blend it in, then if you want, you can see the word gather there is coming through. I took my white chalk paint again and just lightly went over some of those places to blend everything in until I had the finished look that I wanted. Now that my frame pieces are dry with paint, I can go ahead and wood glue those together and then let that dry as well once I have my rectangle shape all put together. And I will say that it's important you have patience and make sure this is dried completely before you try to move it. Now I have my frame face down on my table and I'm taking hot glue going all the way around the edges of my sign and then I'm going to flip that over and glue it to the back of my Jenga block frame. You can see I'm doing that there. Once I know that it's all attached, I can flip it over. And then the last thing is just to take my nativity set pieces, arrange them how I want on the front of the sign, 
and then just glue all those down. I love the silhouette. I love the dark brown on the white background with the black frame and just the simplicity of this. You do have space on your sign. You could add wording if you like, but I liked just having the nativity pieces speak for themselves. For DIY number two, we're going to make a nativity using one of these banks from Dollar Tree. Some tumbling tower blocks, paint, scrapbook paper, Mod Podge, some jute twine, and a couple of wood beads. So these banks, the back comes off pretty easily, but the front glass does not. So you're going to take a scraper and you're going to scrape off all those letters that are on the inside of the glass clean it up real good, and then you'll be ready to put your nativity together. I chose to use some of this wood shiplap scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. I'm just tracing the outline of the back of the bank and then going to cut that out, trim it just a little bit so that it'll fit right over that background paper that's there. And I'm just gonna use glue stick to glue down my scrapbook paper right over top of the backing that was already there. So glue stick, smooth it out, and then you're ready to go. Now to make Joseph and Mary, I'm going to use two tumbling tower blocks for each, gluing them together with wood glue like a sandwich cookie here. So there's Joseph's body. We'll do the same thing for Mary. And then I'm going to use one tumbling tower block and one of these mini clothespins, taking it apart to be our manger. So the two pieces of the clothespin will crisscross to be the legs. I'm taking some brown acrylic paint here and I'm painting all three pieces for the manger and also Joseph's body. And then I'm going to use this really pretty light country blue for Mary, but just use paints that you have on hand you don't have to go out and buy anything special to make this. Then taking some light pink and some brown, I'm mixing to get a skin tone to paint these wood beads for Joseph and Mary's heads and then also baby Jesus. Then I'm putting some hot glue on the bottom of the bank and I'm going to cover that black surface with some of this hay, I think it's called Excelsior or something like that, in the floral department of Dollar Tree and just a little bit, trim it where you need to, and then we'll start gluing our pieces to the back of our bank. So first we're gonna glue down our manger, then we'll glue down Mary and Joseph, and put baby Jesus in the manger as well. For our finishing touch, we'll just add a little bit more of this hay to be in the manger with baby Jesus, and then we'll put our bank back together. And our last touch will be just to add a wood star that we've painted with a gold paint right there at the top to finish off our bank nativity. DIY number three is going to be a true love was born in a stable sign. I love this quote and I knew I won wanted to make a DIY with it when I saw it using a tag, um, some tumbling tower blocks, and we're just going to take this tall tag and where the right hand corner is, once we remove the twine, is we're gonna draw a line to make the top of this tag more like the top of a house. So from the center of the top, to that right corner. We're gonna score that a few times until we're able to break off that piece. 
you can easily clean this up with a sturdy pair of scissors and then do the exact same thing on the other side. So I love taking items from the Dollar Tree and changing them, modifying them to make them into something different. You can see here that I also did peel the paper for the design off the front of the house. Then I'm going to make some sticks of tumbling tower blocks. I'm going to make four sets that are five pairs long and two sets that are three pairs long. So you've seen me do this before. First, I'm gonna glue my pairs together like sandwich cookies. And then once those are dry, make my sticks. These are three pairs long. Like I said, we'll make two of those and then we will make some that are five pairs long. Let those dry and then we will be ready to paint them as soon as they are dry. I wanted the back of my house sign to have kind of a shiplap look, so I made a line there at the corner of the roof. Then I'm going to just divide the height into four e even um, amounts, draw a line across like I did with our first DIY in this video. Now that our tumbling tower blocks are dry, I am going to give these a coat of truffle chalk paint. I want the outline of my house to be brown. And then I'm coming back to the house sign and I'm going to just give it a layer of Mod Podge on the front because it is paper. And I do want to write some wording on the front and it will just make a better background for the Sharpie marker. So I just do Google searches for my wording. I said, true love was born in a stable and I looked at images till I found one I liked. Save it as a picture on your computer and then print it in Word in the size that you want. Then using some of my carbon tracing paper, I'm going around it with the stylus and there you see, voila, I have my wording on my sign and can fill that in with Sharpie. Now I'm taking one of my sets of five and gluing that across the bottom of my house sign. I will then also, once I have all the other pieces on, glue one on the back so my little house or stable can stand. Two of the other long pieces will go on either side, just hot gluing those on. The smaller pieces will make the roof and then a star at the top to hide the little gap. Then flipping it over, like I said, we'll glue that last piece across the bottom to make our stand for our sign. The great thing about this sign is you can pair it with any nativity. You can use one of these Hobby Lobby ornaments. You can use any small little nativity figurine that you have. Whatever you have on hand, you can pair it with. And you can see I also added a few little red hearts around the word love. I adore this and um, it's so simple to make with just a tag from Dollar Tree and some tumbling tower blocks. If you're new to my channel today, stopping by for the first time, welcome. I sure hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. If you are a returning subscriber or viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. For DIY number four, we're going to make a set of wood pillar candle holders using these wood box drawers, some little glass votive hand, uh, candle holders, and some LED candles. So I am taking both the outsides and the inside cubes for these drawers, and I am stacking them in varying heights using wood glue and then letting those dry completely. You'll see here in a second what I have made. This That first one was a set of two of the outside cubes. This is a set of two of the inside. Then I believe I did four of the inside pieces and then two of the outside. So there's my four different pillars. Then I'm gonna use the spackle to fill in any of the cracks and then sand that down so it's nice and smooth. Next, I gave all four of my pillars a coat of Waverly chalk paint in white. So there, that one you can see is four of the inside drawers. And I'm going to use this black and white buffalo check ribbon to go up and around each 
of my pillars. Mostly it's to cover up those little shaped cut out holes in my smaller um, drawers that I used for some of my pillars. So I'm just attaching that with hot glue on the inside. We'll go up and around covering up, like I said, those little shaped holes and then come down pulling it tight and hot glue it on the inside of the other side of our pillar. So I'm going to do that to all four of my pillars if they have the cutouts or not. Then using some of the poster sticker letters from Dollar Tree, I'm going to spell out the words peace, hope, love, and joy. If you do Advent candles at your church, you know those are the four candles for the four weeks of Advent. You could definitely do different words or leave your words off. These little glass votive holders come in a pack of four for a dollar at Dollar Tree. I'm going to glue one to the top of each of my pillars and then we'll be ready to put them uh, with some candles. This step is optional, but if you want a place to put your candles, I'm going to take this charger plate with three different colors of gray paint, gray uh, chalk paint from Waverly, and I'm going to make this charger plate look like galvanized metal. It's a gold color, but I really liked the, um, looks like rivets going all the way around. To me, it said it needed to be metal. So I'm taking one of these foam dome brushes, using first elephant in Waverly chalk paint to go around. Then when that was not quite all the way dry, now I'm taking a mineral and trying to cover up the rest of the gold, kind of blending them all in until it looks like this hammered metal look. Once I had that how I liked it, I did take Mod Podge and seal it all in with a coat of this matte finish Mod Podge and let that dry completely. So here's our candles and our plate, you can arrange them however you'd like, and then go ahead and put in your candles, either real ones or LEDs. If you'd rather not have them displayed on a plate like this, you could just set them all next to each other on a mantle or a shelf. I thought a Lazy Susan underneath this might be good if you are actually using it for Advent. DIY number five is another simple nativity using a terrarium from Dollar Tree, one of these chunky wood circle ornaments, some more of the hay, a tumbling tower block, a wood bead, and a star. First, I'm gonna take my truffle chalk paint and I'm gonna give my wood circle a coat of this. This is going to be the base of our nativity and then just set that aside to dry. Now we're gonna make baby Jesus with one tumbling tower block and one small wood bead. I'm just going to hot glue that bead right onto that tumbling tower block and set that aside to dry. Then taking, I'm using felt, but you can use whatever white cloth maybe that you have. And I'm just going to wrap this around baby Jesus's body. First, I did a piece going up the front and then up the back kind of to cover where his feet would be and then the other piece I'm going to crisscross and wrap around and secure it with hot glue and here's how our little baby Jesus turned out now taking one of these terrariums from Dollar Tree I am putting a bunch of hot glue on the bottom gluing that down to our wood circle base so be on the lookout for these I still see them in my store even if you don't have time to make one this year Grab some of these terrariums when you see them and you can make this nativity next year. There's a little wood star that I painted gold and glued right on top of the little ring where you would hang this terrarium. Then some of the excelsior hay-like looking grass, just pull off some of that, tuck it inside, tuck in baby Jesus. I think it's super cute like this. I did decide to take some sticker letters and add one more detail to this. I'm going to spell out the words away in a manger. If you do put the stickers on, you will want to go over those with Mod Podge so that they don't peel off. Thank you. 
DIY number six is super simple using one of these wood nativity ornaments from Hobby Lobby, some paint, a gold paint marker, and a repurposed box or square sign. This one was from Hobby Lobby, but you could use one from Dollar Tree as well. I decided this time to paint my Silhouette Nativity wood ornament with my black chalk paint. And then I'm going to also paint the star gold. You can see if you keep it the natural color, it would look great on a dark background. But since I'm using this galvanized metal, I decided to go with the black Silhouette. All you're gonna do then is just hot glue this to your surface and your sign is ready to go. For DIY number seven, I'm going to show you how I made these Names of Jesus ornaments using tumbling tower blocks and some jute twine and some paint. So my devotions last year for Advent, I used this book called Unwrapping the Names of Jesus. And basically each day of December leading up to Christmas, you're reading a devotion based on one of the names for Jesus in the Bible. So I decided it'd be cool to make a set of ornaments that had all those names. I will put a link for this printable in the description box below. It had a lot of the names from the book. It did not have all of them. So I am going to have to kind of make up my own. But for each ornament, I'm gonna take four tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to glue them together like this. It's basically the same size as those little, um, printouts. So once those were all dry, I am going to use my antique wax on all of the sides, front, back, and all of the edges for each of my ornaments, brushing it on, and then wiping off the excess. I just love using this in my DIYs. If you've watched any of my videos, you know how much I love it. I really feel it just gives a higher end look to your projects. However, then I took my white chalk paint. I decided the very front of each ornament, I wanted it to be white. This was gonna be where I put each of the names for the ornaments. So I'm really trying hard not to get the paint on the sides and just keep it on the front of each ornament. So do that for all of them. Then I am going to put a layer of Mod Podge because I'm going to be using Sharpie marker mainly to get the words on, I wanted a nice smooth surface. Now, if you are not using the devotional and just want ornaments that say these names of Jesus or anything else, you could just Mod Podge these papers on. I'm gonna go ahead and just try my best with a Sharpie to copy the um, names as they were on those printouts. Once I had all my names, I'm taking jute twine like this. You can see on each side, I am going to tack that down with a little bead of hot glue so it doesn't slide around. Tie a knot and then we'll take the hanger string across to the other side and do the same thing where we're going to tie a knot at the top and then make this. I love how this gives kind of a farmhouse rustic look to each of these ornaments. Then once you've secured that with hot glue, just trim off the little extras from where you tied it. And here's what all the ornaments looked like. I think this is a great technique you can use for making ornaments that say anything. You can make them for names of people in your family. Really, the possibilities are endless, but I loved making these to go along with my Advent devotions. If you're enjoying this video and love budget home decor, please give this video a thumbs up to let YouTube know that this is content you want to keep seeing. DIY number eight is going to be a silent night hanging star sign using two of these wood stars from Dollar Tree, some printouts of the hymn Silent Night, and some antique wax and some various other wood 
stars in different sizes. So the first thing I'm doing is taking my white chalk paint and I'm going around the inside edges of my stars about half an inch. This is because um, my hymns that I printed were not quite going to be big enough to go all the way to cover these stars. So you saw I traced on the front of the music there and we're going to Mod Podge that on, but it doesn't quite cover all of the corners, but that's okay. We're gonna cover that up. So using some matte finish Mod Podge, just doing a light layer on the star and then putting the printout of the hem over top, sanding the edges to get them nice and smooth. And then I'm taking my antique wax and going around the edges of the star brushing it on and kind of rubbing it out to make our stars with the sheet music look worn and old. Again, going on a Google image search, I printed or I typed in Silent Night, Holy Night, found this image, printed it as big as I wanted it, and I'm using my carbon tracing paper once again to trace it onto the front of my sign so that I can trace it and fill it in with a Sharpie marker. I love this technique, it takes a little longer, but is a way less expensive way than vinyl or anything like that. I wanted my project to be finished on the back, so I am going to do the antique wax on the back of my big stars as well. And then you can see I have some different sizes of stars that I'm adding to this hang wall hanging, so I'm painting those with the antique wax as well on all the sides. Next, just taking a dowel that I had on hand, I am going to paint that black. You can use whatever you have on hand, and I'm going to use my jute twine to go back through the holes on my two big stars so that they can hang. And then I'm going to glue some jute twine to the back of all my other little stars so that they can all hang from the dowel to make our wall hanging. I did decide to glue a small star to each of my big stars, again, to just give it some more dimension and character. And then we're gonna hang all of them from the dowel. I did use nautical rope to be my main hanger for my dowel, just tying a knot, securing it with some hot glue on either end, and then cutting off the excess of the rope. DIY number nine is a chunky painted nativity ornament. I'm just going to use one of these chunky wood circles and some paint along with a black marker and a white paint marker. So the first thing I'm gonna do after I smooth out the surface, make sure it's nice and smooth, is I'm going to paint this entire thing with my ink Waverly chalk paint. Then taking some white paint and some dark blue paint, I'm going to start with the dark blue and you can see I'm leaving a little bit of the black around the edge and I'm going to make a circle using the navy blue. I'm just gonna explain my process here and let you watch. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of white to my blue to make a slightly lighter blue and do another circle. I'm gonna keep doing this until I get all the way to just white in the center and then I'm gonna keep blending those until I get them how I want them. So just kind of watch and I think you'll catch on to what I'm doing. Then here at this point, you can see I've started adding some more of just the navy blue paint in until I can get this ombre effect where I'm getting lighter as you move towards the center of the circle. This is just going to be the background 
for my little nativity ornament, but I really liked how it looked like light was just kind of coming out of the center of the circle. Once I had my paint how I wanted it and it was dry, I did go over it with matte finish Mod Podge. Again, just to make sure it was a nice smooth surface. And then I'm going to draw my image on with a black Sharpie marker. First making the little hill at the bottom and then you're going to see me draw the stable, Joseph, Mary, and baby Jesus in the manger. Now I did not do this from my mind. I kind of had a picture that I was trying to copy and um, use, but you could put whatever image you want. You could just do baby Jesus in the manger, but I loved this image kind of like the Hobby Lobby ornament that I've been using of just the silhouette of the stable and the manger and the Holy Family. And to finish it off, I did add a Star of Bethlehem with a white paint marker at the top, put a, another piece of jute string in there to hang it, and our ornament is finished. I was very excited when I was shopping at Dollar General last time. It was the middle of December and they had finally stocked these $3 nativities. So today I'm going to give two of those away. To enter this drawing, you just need to, in the comments, let me know what your favorite Christmas carol is or Christmas song. For DIY number 10, we're going to make a cute rustic looking ornament of Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus using clothespins, a wooden star, and some floral wire. So we're going to need three clothespins. We're gonna take them apart from the metal spring and we're gonna glue them flat sides together like this. So we're gonna make three of these and then we're going to set those aside to dry. We're gonna paint our little wood star with some gold paint. You can use acrylic or a paint marker. Then using my little miter saw and miter box, we're gonna cut two of these a little bit. This one where we're cutting here is going to be baby Jesus. Then we're just gonna cut a little bit off the bottom for Mary, just so we can make her a little bit shorter than Joseph. We're going to take again some white felt and just wrap it around baby Jesus's body, securing it with hot glue. Next, we'll take a little bit more of hot glue and glue Mary and Joseph together like this, and then we will assemble our ornament. I'm gonna use this floral wire, I believe it's from Dollar Tree, and I'm making just a little loop that will hang our ornament, but also hold the star up over their heads. So once I have the loop as big as I want it, I twisted the wire a little bit. I'm gonna hold it in place and wrap it around Mary and Joseph's bodies just a couple of times. Flipping it to the back, we will secure that with a little bit of hot glue on the backs of Mary and Joseph. Then we'll take baby Jesus, glue him diagonally across Joseph and Mary. 
we'll attach our star to the top of our metal loop and this ornament will be done. DIYs 11 and 12 were made not that long ago using some of my stencils from Magnolia Design Company, but they were two of my favorites that I've done of the nativity. So I'm using um, the Jesus is the reason for the season stencil, and I'm also using winter words. So if you haven't seen these stencils before, you do want to fuzz them on this cloth just to get a little of the sticky off. And I'm going to use my white uh, chalk paste on this really skinny cutting board that I found at a thrift store. Using my little spreader, I'm just going to do the main center part of the nativity. Then when that is dry, I'm going to start with the word night, centering that above the stable. Then we'll do holy and then O. You just spread the chalk paste into the mesh stencil and then pull it up and you have a really crisp, nice image. I love these stencils. If you have any questions about them, there's information in the description box below. I'm using a star and I'm painting it with some gold paint marker. And then, like I said, centering that last word, go ahead and glue your star above your words. And then I added a little burlap bow to finish off this very simple, cute, rustic nativity cutting board. DIY number 12, like I said, is another one of my favorites using these stencils. This is where you can take a stencil and remake a hardcover book from Dollar Tree. I had painted over the words on the spine for a previous DIY. You don't need to do that because we're going to use a wide ribbon for this project to decorate and cover up any words that might be on the spine. So again, I'm using the Jesus is the reason for the season stencil. It's a little too long to fit on the book, so we're just going to first put the nativity at the bottom. We'll do that with our chalk paste, and then we're only going to be able to fit the words, Jesus is the reason. So first putting the chalk paste on the nativity image, and then we're going to move our stencil down so that the word Jesus is lined up at the top and do the words, Jesus is the reason. This chalk paste dries really quickly. I did spray some matte finish um, spray sealer on it, which kind of gave it that little bit of a cloudy look. If you wanted it to look more um, just clear, you would probably want to use gloss over the stenciled image. Then I loved this wide ribbon I found at Walmart. I'm just lining it up at the top and bottom of the spine with some hot glue and then I will fold over the sides and I just think this is so cute. I definitely plan on making more of these next year for my craft show. For DIY 13, we're making a paint stick tree with the words for unto us a child is born. I am using the five gallon paint sticks, some sticker letters. Now I'm showing three packs here, but this is because I was cutting them to make three different um, trees. You could just use three single paint sticks. I am marking them at 16 inches. And then that first one I marked at three inches. The second one I marked at 16 inches and five inches. And then I'm going to mark 16 inches and seven inches. So this will give me three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and 13 inch pieces. Now I'm going to use those same three grays of my Waverly chalk paint. This is silver lining with some water, mineral with some water, and then elephant with some water. And so what I'm wanting is kind of different 
shades of a gray wash, if that makes sense. So I didn't want it to be opaque paint, kind of more like three different shades of a gray stain. So here I'm just doing the fronts and all the side edges of my pieces. I love these five gallon paint sticks because they are thicker and just can give you a more substantial piece. There's the uh, mineral and then the elephant. So you can see my different pieces there. Now, I haven't shown this technique in a while, but I have shown using sticker letters, but here you can see I am cutting out where I've already used the sticker, and we're kind of making stencils out of these spaces that used to have stickers. So I'm gonna do four unto us a is born. I'm gonna use child, I'm gonna do actual sticker letters. But here you can see I put down the um, where the sticker was and I'm coloring that in with a white paint marker. And then when you lift those up, it's just like you stenciled on the letters. So don't throw away your sticker papers even when you've used the stickers, you can use the space around. Here I'm just peeling up the stickers that were stuck in the middle. Now I'm gonna use eight Jenga blocks to make a stand for my tree. I'm going to first glue them together in pairs like this. And then once my pairs are dry, I'll glue two pairs together to make two rectangles. I think you've seen me do this before. This is just a really easy way to make a stand for these paint stick trees. So glue those together, let them dry, and then I am going to paint the base with elephant chalk paint, the darkest gray that I used. I'm also going to paint one complete stick with the elephant to be my trunk. I did decide to go over my words with the matte finish Mod Podge just to seal in the painted words and also to keep the stickers from peeling off. Now I'm just going to start with wood glue and hot glue and glue my pieces down onto the trunk of my tree. Now, probably doing this again, I would leave that top piece off and just put the star there. Or I could have moved my words up one stick and then on the bottom one, put the reference from Luke where um, this verse is found. But anyway, here is our paint stick tree for Unto Us A Child Is Born. And DIY number 14, we're gonna come back to some stencils and make a glass etched nativity candle holder. Now these stencils are from a maker studio. They're very similar to the Magnolia Design Company ones. And this is a set that has these stars or snow and then it has the nativity and then it also has the snow with the trees and the reindeer. So you can do a lot with these stencils. I've decided here, I'm trying to space out where I'm gonna put everything. I'm gonna do two layers of these stars. So I'm first gonna wrap this around the very top of my glass um, vase from Dollar Tree. And then this is a glass etching cream. I think I saw on some Dollar Tree hauls that some Dollar Trees were carrying this, but basically you just put this on your stencil, you peel off the stencil and you let that sit on the glass for at least five minutes. All right, and then you're gonna come back with a wet paper towel and you're going to wipe off the excess and it will leave an etching where that stenciled image was. It's really, really cool. It's kind of hard to see it on camera, but there you can kind of see when I hold the gray behind it. I did decide to do two layers um, of the star, so I'm gonna do another one right underneath there, and then I'm going to wrap the nativity stencil all the way around and do the same thing, and then we'll have a really pretty glass etched nativity candle holder. Again, when we peel off the stencil, we will let that sit for about five minutes and then wipe away the excess. And this one's a little easier to see because um, it's just a bigger stenciled image. So you'll just wipe it away and it'll look like you're taking it all off. But then when you dry it, you can see how it is etched on there, super pretty. You can decorate this any way you'd like inside. I'm gonna use some of these white stones in the bottom, and then I'm gonna put 
um, a green Christmas tree. Of course, you could put like a red candle would be really pretty as well. Our last project is a Oh Come Let Us Adore Him sign using one of these long signs from Dollar Tree, some paint, some rope, and one more of these Hobby Lobby Nativity ornaments. So once I got the metal heart off this sign, I'm just sanding it down. Then I'm going to fill in the string holes at the top with that spackle again, let that dry, and then sand it down so it's nice and smooth. Once that's done, I'm going to come to my nativity ornament. I must have been out of antique wax this day because I'm using this other one from Deco Art. It is a lot lighter, it's thinner, but it gave it more of a golden kind of stained look, which was just as pretty. Also, we're going to then take our white chalk paint I did need a couple of layers to completely cover over the red on this sign, but again, I like to cover over the front part of the sign so that the back still looks finished. You can see I also took a Sharpie marker and outlined those grooves in the sign. Just like on our first DIY in this video, taking my truffle chalk paint and a chippy brush, I'm just going to dry brush some of that brown on there to give our sign a rustic look. Trying to decide then where I'm going to place my nativity. And these are words, again, that I did a Google search. Oh, come let us adore him. And using my carbon tracing paper, going around and transferring that really pretty um, writing to the sign so then I can trace over it with either a Sharpie or a black paint marker. I just love how this carbon tracing paper works and you get so much of it and it's going to last me forever. So you can use any painter's marker or you can use a Sharpie. Once you have that all filled in, you can make the star on your nativity uh, gold it stands out a little bit from this golden stain. And then go ahead and hot glue your nativity ornament to your sign. I went around the outline of the back with that black marker so that I wouldn't get any on the sides. But then I am going to finish off the back of my sign by just painting the inside there with my black chalk paint. Again, just so it looks finished on the back. Once that is dry, I'm going to put new holes in my sign because I need them on this side. I'm going to use my Crocodile Big Bite, which is strong enough to punch a hole through these Dollar Tree signs. And then we will hang our string to hang our sign. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Bye.